Hello, my name is Michael Pettit. I'm the CIO of Open Amplify. We're out here today on the Chesapeake Bay to interview Dr. Steve DeRose, our Director of Linguistics, on an important subject, a new feature that we will shortly release in Open Amplify called co-reference. So, Doc, what is co-reference? Well, co-reference is a part of analyzing the language of a piece of text to find out what different noun phrases or other words refer to the same being, the same person, business, place, something like that. So, for example, someone might refer to a person by name at the beginning of an article and then just refer to he or she later on. And detecting that, that he or she refers to that name. I see. Okay. So, since people stylistically tend not to repeat someone's name over and over again, in order to be able, for example, to uh, attach the polarity, the sentiment, in a later sentence to a person who was mentioned in an earlier sentence, that's where co-reference comes in, correct? Exactly. They, uh, the first sentence might just be introducing who it is the article is talking about. It might not say anything particularly positive or negative about them. And then a little while later in the article, they start making their case for why this person is good or evil or whatever else. Certainly. But by that time, they're just down to referring to them as he. And okay. without co-reference, you'd never know that that positive or negative statement later on applies to the person that's being. Okay, so the importance of it is obvious. I mean, clear, clearly, since people stylistically don't make it easy for us to tie all these things together, unless we figure out a way to tie it together, our ability to accurately reflect the true sentiments or really any of the other things, whether there's guidance being offered about something in a, in a later sentence, etc., yep. really depends pretty fundamentally on co-reference. Absolutely. Now, as I recall, uh, in an earlier discussion we had, uh, in order to be able to uh, to do this effectively, you have to be able to identify the named entities and 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 uh, and understand that a reference to President Obama and a later reference to the president are in fact the uh, are in fact co-referring. Mm -hmm. Yep. Super. That's part okay. Of the package too. Okay. So so we've kind of covered why it is that uh, that that what co-reference is and why it is that it's important. Uh, why is it so hard? We, we found it to be hard, by the way. Uh, and I, I think there's, I think it's useful for people to understand why this is a difficult challenge to meet. Well, it is one of the difficult traditional challenges in natural language processing. One of the reasons is that humans are really smart about taking all of their knowledge of the world into account in figuring out what pronouns like he and she refer to, or there's other words too, of course. But computers, of course, are not very smart. So when you see this he down there, three paragraphs, humans just automatically figure out from the context, oh, gee, it's, you know, the latest thing referenced was this, but that can't be what he applies to because that's female. And the right. last yeah. thing referenced before that can't be what it's referring to because uh, for this sentence to be true, the person has to be rich, and the second last person mentioned isn't rich. And they bring in all these different knowledge things, what they know about the world and about people's interactions. We can't do all that. So doing without human knowledge and still getting the answer right it's usually tired. difficult. I can see that. And I can see a circumstance, for example, where if I were to make a statement like, um, I'm having lunch today with uh, some motors going by. Um, I'm having lunch today with Jack and Jill. Jill, she's lovely. A human being instinctively knows that the she refers to Jill because we know that Jill is female. If, on the other hand, I were to say, I'm having lunch today with Steve and Dave, uh, he's a really smart guy. There's a built-in ambiguity there that even a human being has difficulty with. Yeah, unless maybe they happen to know something about the two guys involved, and they can figure it out from some personal knowledge. What would be the sensible the, thing the to say? The external context, right. etc., which we don't have. Which we don't have in a computer and environment. There are a few cases that are just hopeless. You know, there yep. you'll never get 100 percent of these right, as you just pointed out. Humans don't get 100 percent of them right. Which which suggests that. Um, for us to do this, we have to go after an 80-20 type of approach here. And by the way, um, 
With Open Amplify, we tend to take an 80-20 approach to most of the things we do. There are certain types of cases, as, as you know, that are extremely difficult to do. We could agonize over them for years and never bring anything to the marketplace. So our approach has always been to get something to the stage where it's good enough to be useful and get it out there. And co-reference, of course, is, is uh, no exception to that rule. So uh, let's talk for a moment about what specific types of co-reference we're going to tackle first. Well, we've mentioned most of them already, but uh, just to review, uh, one is names. You know, first name, last name versus just the first name or the last name, tying those together. Um, and varying forms of name, Mike versus Michael. True. And of course, there's or some messy IBM versus international business machines. Yes. We really can work example. with acronyms, etc. Sure. Some of those get messy. Of course, you have Pat, which can be either male or female. True. And if you've got Pat, Patrick, and Patricia all mentioned in the same thing, that can get touchy. Yeah, I can see that. But we're going after that sort of thing. The names, titles, uh, like President Obama, we mentioned before, knowing that that's the same as the president and as Obama. Okay. Uh, pronouns. He and she are the most important, most common. It, we're going to put off for a little while because it is used in an extraordinary extraordinary number of ways that have nothing to do with co-reference. Uh, Such as? Well, famous one is, it's raining. Who's raining? Huh. It's not the of last course. person that was mentioned. So it has a number of other problems. We're looking into those, but those we're not going to deal with it That's in the part of the release. 20. That's part of the 20 for now. Okay. Uh, so those are the main ones. Uh, pronouns, uh, personal names, uh, including not just people, but some you know companies and other things, locations, and then titles. Okay. So co-reference is an attempt on our part to greatly increase the overall accuracy of every signal we produce. Being able to attach polarity more appropriately, being able to attach guidance signals, intent, everything else that we do more accurately rests very firmly on the foundation of co-reference. It's hard, very hard to do. We're going to take a good swipe at it in this first version, which will be released sometime during the course of this summer. And uh, it's uh, an example of Open Amplify's commitment to its mission, which is to, to, um, to really to surface every shred of meaning possible uh, from web content. We'll never stop trying to do that. Uh, our belief is that if you want to be able to effectively utilize web content, you have to be able to understand it, uh, and at great scale and very rapidly. Co-reference is a good example of building a foundation that makes everything else better. So I'd like to thank you. Uh, doc, Dr. Dr. Uh, uh, Steve DeRose, our Director of Linguistics. I'd like to thank all of you for listening. I'd like to thank the Chesapeake Bay for being relatively calm, although some faces around here might suggest otherwise. And uh, thank you very much for listening.